This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. June Ahern's work with spirits and ghosts is interesting, mostly fun, and certainly rewarding. Albert Einstein concurred, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Valeria Tellis interviews June Ahern, the author of How to Talk with Spirits, Seances, Mediums, Ghost Hunts. June Ahern has authored four books and is a metaphysical life coach. Her near-death experience led June to an unexpected career as a psychic reader and medium. Her book, How to Talk with Spirits, Seances, Mediums, Ghost Hunts, has proved to be helpful in understanding the psychic phenomena of spirit communication and is in the process of becoming a movie. Although retired from private practice, she continues to share her abilities as a paranormal investigator with The Haunted Bay on Amazon Prime and YouTube. Her book, The Timeless Counselor, The Best Guide to a Psychic Reading, was the number one bestseller at the 1990 New York's Whole Life Expo. Meet June at juneahern.com. Here is the interview with June Ahern. In your own words, who is June Ahern? I am, oh boy, I, I, I am probably many things. One is that I'm an author of four books, two fiction, two nonfiction. I'm also a metaphysical and spiritual teacher and life coach. I've had a really unplanned, interesting life. Uh, for many years, I had been a psychic reader. I never advertised for it. People just came because they heard about me. I've never told anyone or put it out there. Uh, and, but I did put out my teaching to classes and workshops that I taught. Uh, I'm also a medium, and that means that I mediate between the living world and the unseen world, the spirit world. I'm a paranormal investigator. Uh, I did that for fun to entertain myself as I was retiring from my profession as a reader. Uh, and it just kept growing into something. Again, I don't plan a whole lot of things. Yeah. And they just seem to end up on my my doorstep. <laughs> From your perspective, what is life? Not what life is about, but what is life itself? Life is more organic to me. It is uh, organisms. And we it's a physical manifestation of the energy that surrounds us on the cosmic plane and uh, universal plane. And it comes energetically down into Earth and it activates energies. Uh, maybe that's something we talk a little later about, uh, the importance of why we have to have our minds in a different place. It And really what I'm learning more and more is the very various dimensions that are we can access those it, we are prepared to access them and sometimes we access them even when we're not prepared like dreams uh, it's a fascinating life uh, you know so I, I follow the brain studies I look at everything that they are coming up with more and more the scientists and neurologists and uh, you know brain surgeons and they're finding out more and more that there's a brain, but there's something outside the brain they keep calling the mind. And right. I will say, well, Mel, welcome to the <laughs> metaphysics. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, is that a mystery for you? Is there any mystery when it comes to energy, mind, thoughts, intuition? Yes. Even? yes. Uh, I never, I know people call themselves experts in the uh, psychic uh, professions and such, and I don't really 
believe that there are excerpts because we're learning all the time. And it would, when we're open, new kinds of awakening and awareness happens all the time. So I don't know everything. I haven't experienced everything, but certainly uh, I'm open to seeing different dimensional spaces. Or the way to interpret this mystery, so-called mystery oh, yes. of life, right? This is an attempt to interpret you know, that, that. That's the beauty of um, doing da- some kind of daily spiritual uh, work, meditation or reflection. And that's what I do. Yeah, I love those practices, uh, energy work, anything that would take me out of the um, programmed, let's say, planned, programmed uh, (laughs) daily activities. (laughs) Nature is one of the things that kind of brings me to that realm of the unseen, the unknown. It's just beautiful. Oh, I'm out in it every day. I live by the ocean. Oh, that's the best. And I also live by a very wooded area uh, where you can hike up further kind of into the hills. And I do both. Do you think that there is a meaning when we get sick, when the body gets sick and ill, and also physical death, is there a meaning behind these arisings? Uh, yes, I believe there are. Uh, we know, I, I'll now refer to Louise Hay, uh, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, and I, when I received that book from as a gift in the 80s, it really entuned me so deeply to how our body responds to our thoughts. And how we, whatever we're thinking will decide how we treat our body. And sometimes we have to search for that thought. Now, I do believe that because we're physical beings, we have to handle it in a physical way also, not only by, let me change my mind and, oh, I'll get rid of this or that. Uh, I have not experienced that by watching other people and their illnesses. So I believe it has to be a two thing because we are spiritual beings living in a physical body. I want to get to the part of, that's the second part of the interview. I want to ask you about the quiz that you have. It's called the... ESP. It's the extra sensory perception. Just to mention here before I ask you more questions, you wrote how to talk with spirits, seances, mediums, ghosts, and hunts. So that's the book that we'll be talking about in a moment. Before that, June, how do you define spirituality? Well, I, this is the way I look at it. We are we are spirits. We are energetic beings, which is called in our world we call it spirits and to me spirituality is being in touch with your true self your spirit of who you are and we know that thing though people say oh they have a strong spirit they're very spirited uh when they're around i can feel their spirit and i'm talking about living people uh they have a good spirit you know all those words so we're really speaking about the true our true face our true self that's how I look. Spirituality is is the practice to me of in tuning to the truth of who you are karmically. What are you doing on this planet? How do you follow your own path, which is then the spiritual path? What came to mind was the uh, this wine. They also alcohol. They call it spirits. Yes. Do you know why? <laughs> it just came <laughs> to me. It out to <laughs> in Scotland, um, whiskey. It's called the the water of life, the water Mm, that's spelled W-A-A-T-E-R, water of life. Mm. And when you consume alcohol, especially when it's done, uh, say, in ritual, you know, long ago it was done in more ritualistic. They had the bonfire. They danced around it. They probably had it before they went to war. And it brought up the spirit energy, fire energy within you. Uh, unfortunately, it became more uh, abused and, and such like that. But uh, that's why that little glass of wine can relax you and you become more of yourself. In the sense of expression, right? Correct. Too much. Mm, sometimes, <laughs> <No>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can turn into, a, for some people, like um, alcoholics, you see that they when they drink, they tend to go quite the opposite. I mean, is that an expression of who they are at some level when they become violent and and aggressive. Yeah, I think that is an expression of what's inside of them. Because, you know, all affects the brain. Alcohol affects parts of the brain. 
And uh, that's why I just love the study of the more and more current studies of the brain. And, and we know that it affects the brain greatly and it taps into a part of who, perhaps who we are or who we have been in another lifetime. I wonder how we manage to become so solid because if we are influenced by all of these elements, spiritual, beautiful conversations, nature, uh, fresh air, you know, how do we manage to be solid, to be one thing all the time, so rational, so logical, we hold down to that identity? It, some people need to feel that. Uh, some people need to have, identify through ego. And you, and you know that. You've probably had plenty of shows on that. And they identify, they have, when people ask me, how do you know that you're spiritually connected? I say, when you feel at peace or joy or even in sadness, some kind of understanding, some kind of calmness that you can't identify, say you're grieving. But when you are out of that, you are in ego. So think of the ego, the third chakra with the spirit energy outside. So, uh, I see auras and I, I actually color and can color somebody's aura so and they should be connecting the ego and the spirit if they're not connected in wavelength, then you are not living in spirit. You're living in ego. So most of us hold on to that false idea because it might be easier too, right? Convenient mm -hmm. and safe. Safe. That's yes, absolutely. You think you're safe. When you see these beautiful people like the Dalai Lama and he gets distraught, I saw him talking where he was distraught about things. Yeah. But at the end of it, he kind of did a little <laughs> smile anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right? <laughs> mm, yeah. Wow. I love that. If we can get to that point, right? To get yes, distressed yes. And, and then go back, you know, to who we are. That space of peace and, and no threats because in the end, everything's connected. There's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, if you think of when Jesus, you know, up on the cross and he finally calls out to Father, Father, why have you abandoned me? Because he was still a physical being, even though he understood why he was doing it, supposedly as history came down. Um, and I can understand that no matter how we are spiritual, while we're living in a physical body, we still relate to the physical the whole atmosphere around us. And it's natural to be afraid to die, right, Joan? Or oh, afraid yes. of pain, physical pain. It's a, yeah, more afraid of pain. I, <laughs> I'm not afraid of dying and leaving this uh -huh. world. I'll miss certain things, but right. uh, <laughs> I, I want to say, could I do it without any pain, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's possible to not just ask for that, but to kind of live in such a way that that kind of death manifests. Is that possible, June, from your perspective? Well, I believe that there are certain practitioners of higher um, mystic and and like higher mystical beings that are able to, to slow down and stop certain pain. Most of us don't know how to do that, even right. though I might practice and say, I'll go to the dentist and I'll just uh. breathe certain <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and so it's difficult. I think of when we come into this world, going through the birth canal, they say is the most dangerous place when the baby's going through the because their breathing is cut off. Everything's cut off for them. They're, they're stuck in this canal. And there has to be a sense of an alarm going off to the, the baby being born in the brain. The alarm like, whoa, I can't breathe. <laughs> And so there's pain getting in and there's pain getting out. <laughs> right. So but we don't want to live in pain. We don't want to have a life full of, of pain. When you say slow down, that's interesting. So slowing down, what does it mean really when we slow down so pain can subside or decrease? Yeah, it's, it's a real uh, devoted practice of breathing and using your mind to take your brain into another place. You know, the, you know that little uh, saying, um, if you're going down a dark alley, whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. Don't let the heebie-jeebies <laughs> come again. Uh, mm. And so we start to train ourselves, but yeah. the mystics that can do that, they do it on a really 
deep, devoted level of learning how to slow the blood uh, coursing through the body, slow the heartbeat, throw them, you know, it's, it wow. takes a lot of work. Yeah, it seems like it's a practice. Yeah, uh, might be it's a work. daily practice. Tighten up, right? When you're in pain, your body goes, ee! Definitely. That's, um, uh, they call it like compressing. Yeah, we tighten up everything for sure. It makes everything worse by doing that. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of this idea of allowing, of surrender. Not giving up, but surrender. That's a surrender kind of act, right? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to go on in this. I'm much older, so I don't think of childbirth and all that. But that's when you go before your childbirth, you go to these classes to teach you how to stop it, to teach you how to breathe right. And so it's a bit of the same sort of how do we surrender to the pain? How do we control the pain through our breathing? Because that's fundamental, right? Breathing is what's holding us here. So if it is holding the body here, it can also kind of take us out of here. Oh, wow. That would be interesting. <laughs> that kind of makes sense, right? It's holding us here, but then can also release us. It can help yes. us to release. Very well said. Very well put. I do have another question. I have lots of questions, too many. But let me ask you this one, June. What is freedom to you? What is to be free? Freedom to me is the ability to be aware that I don't have to. I could choose to either engage myself in a uh, circumstances or situation or that I have enough insight if I can't leave that person or leave that situation immediately, I have freedom to decide how I want to react or even react at all. <clears throat> freedom is the ability to know that I have choice. You know, when I do coaching and people tell me, or even readings and people say, well, you don't understand, I don't have a choice. <laughs> you always have a choice, even if the choice is very limited. And so freedom to me is a conscious awareness that I can act or react. I can make decisions for my life to better my life or worsen it. it that sounds like a working of healing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So healing will get us there. And with that in mind, I have to ask you this, because healing is something that uh, everything I do has to do with that for some reason. So what is your understanding of healing? Is that um, a destination or a process? Can we be finally healed? Is that possible? I believe we can. And I'll tell you uh, briefly a little story. I had a very good friend that was leaving his body, transitioning out of it during the time of AIDS. And he had always denied and hid in the closet that he was gay. You know, he hid in secret of it. And it was sad because the closest friends we all knew. And so he was dying. I saw him the day before he died. And he came, he said to me, uh, June, June, come close. And he said, um, I have to tell you a secret. And I thought he was going to tell me where his money was. Right. And he said, I'm gay. Right. <laughs> I'm like, <Right>. no, <laughs> you know, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I said, mm. I love you. And then his father and his <laughs> uncle came and they were Greek. And uh, they were very, you know, you can't be this, you can't be that. You're a man, right? And he, and he told his father and his uncle, and they cried, and they said, we always knew. And so his healing was not physical, because he would be dead in 24 hours after these conversations. His healing was, he was finally free from the pain he carried in his life for so long. And I think that healing is not necessarily healing the physical body. It could be part of it. Healing is the ability to surrender to who we are and see the truths around us cosmically and spiritually. So when you say that, it kind of just not being afraid to be authentic, to express ourselves honestly. Yeah, yes. Right? Naturally. I wonder why so many of us hold on to pain and we kind of choose that instead of uh, expressing and, and being ourselves. It seems like we are trying to choose between pain and then the fear of the unknown. What will happen yes. if we 
finally express ourselves, you know, truly. I've had people with uh, alcohol or drug problems for clients, and they have said to me, I know who I am now. I don't know how I'll be then if I if I gave it up is what they're saying. So that was the fear uh, of the willingness to discover yourself, the truth of, of self. Would you say it takes sincere commitment, desire to live that authentic life in work and trust or everything, all this? It's or- hard. I mean, even to our family, there's certain things we don't say <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because right. we want the family to stay together. With friends, often we hold something back. So it's difficult to live your life as clear as it's an understanding to you. So you wrote the book, as I mentioned earlier, How to Talk with Spirits, Seances, Mediums, Ghosts, Hunts. So talk to me for a moment about the inspiration and intention of writing this book. I had no intention of writing the book. Another book. I had three books out already. And as you probably know, marketing yourself is a is a whole different part of, of writing. And I had a friend that PM me <laughs> on Facebook and said, I had a dream last night. My angel said you had to write this book on this, the subject, because he knew I had a lot of experiences and, and many adventures with spirits. And I had known him for many years. And I said, no way, I'm not writing another book. I'm done with that. And he wrote me, we went back and forth several times. He finally said, are you mad at me for, for this? And I didn't want him to think I was mad at him. I said, okay, <laughs> I will write a very short little ebook. <laughs> right. And so I sent out a mailing to mm-hmm. clients, friends, and family and said, I know a lot. What do you want? What do you want to know? And oh my God, I've got tons of questions. And that's what I based my book on mostly, were questions. And that's how and I started writing it. And I found out that it just kept going and going. And it was bigger, longer than I ever meant it to be. <laughs> yeah. So it wrote itself. Yes, it wrote yeah. itself. I love that when it's just that um, some people call it downloads and that we just get them from other people, suggestions or dream or insights or intuition. Yeah, that sounds very, very natural to me. I know for so many of us, it's not normal, but it's natural, isn't it? To just kind of open up and let life speak. The writing just takes over. He is now transitioned out of his physical body and yeah. uh, the Chad, because I dedicated the book to him. And uh, yeah, his angel was right. Write the book. (laughs) So how did you discover your psychic abilities? And also talk to me about the experiences you had with ghosts, spirits, and also the afterlife. Well, uh, I had a near-death experience. I was going to say it discovered me. Uh, I had a near-death experience it was something I didn't talk about for quite a few years. Um, my car accident uh, injuries took me a long time to recover physically, yeah. mentally, emotionally from what happened. But I kept having these very strange things happen, uh, movement around me, knowing things about people that I didn't know even. We would call deja vus, those kinds of things. And so I began an interest. Before this car accident, I had gone for fun, for a card reading. And I, and she had predicted that I would be in an accident and some other um, exact examples around that. So I became interested, thought, well, I'm going to start looking into that. And I took a class and uh, I never wanted to declare myself as a medium because I didn't understand it, the spirit showing up to me when I started doing readings or for family members or different uh, people in situations, it took me years to even come out of the closet with that saying, okay, you're right. I do see spirits. I didn't know about it. I didn't know what to do with it. It was frightening, you know, and then I became involved in a couple of cases working with the police through clients of mine, uh, rel- either well, one was a relative and the other was a friend of the relatives of the two murdered women. And I became involved in that. And so the spirit messages were very strong. One, one murder case, the person actually went to prison. I was able to give enough information that was so accurate that when I, 
I was in the car with the DA and the detective. He, the detective had to pull over to the side of the car because he says, I can't believe you. Nobody but the police know that. <laughs> so uh, the spirit went on. Again, I was more, I, I like to do readings that are here and now. What are you doing with your life here and now? And we, we can include other stuff later. And uh, I had read for this young woman named Ying. And then she called me in the uh, 2000s somewhere. And she said, would you like to do a paranormal investigation? I said, well, you know, I'm kind of retired. And, you know, yeah, and she yeah. wanted me to do the Zodiac, the Zodiac killings sites. And I said, oh. absolutely not. Oh. I will not do something like that, right. that sadness and viciousness. Mm, so right. I became, I went somewhere where I thought it would be a lot of fun and it mm. was a lot of fun. And that's how I got involved with that. And as I wow. say, things come to me and, you know, I could say yes or I could say no. Mm. And if it sounds interesting enough, uh, I call it, <laughs> sometimes I call it my entertain, my personal <laughs> entertainment to talk to ghosts. Does it relate to your book? I know there's a movie that's based on your book. Talk to me about that. Is that coming up soon? Uh, it's supposed to go into production in fall. I mean, it's okay. supposed to, you know, everything was held back. They already have some of the actors uh, chosen. Yeah. And um, it is actually based on one of my murder cases. Okay. Uh, Hollywood style. Yeah. <laughs> the one you mentioned about the man went to prison. Is that the one? Uh no, oh, no, a different one. Okay, it's a different one, and the murder was found years later through DNA. Yeah, uh, you know, people think that it's exciting to see, you know, oh, a murder, oh, what happened? I'm going to tell you, it's one of the most frightening and sad things to experience because you are the you are often the person being murdered when a medium is is there. That's what I experienced. I didn't find it exciting. I didn't find it like uh, noteworthy to talk to people about, really, you know. And yes, yes, and and to violence. Violence is a horrible, horrible thing, whether it's against humans, animals, or nature. Violence. Uh, but how I got involved, how I don't do personal um, paranormal investigations, usually, I should say, usually in someone's house. But Matt that worked on the Haunted Bay talked me into it because it's his friend. So I met uh, Quinton Lee, who is a producer, writer, screenwriter, been around in, in that industry for a long time. And I did in San Francisco. I went to his house as a favor to Matt yeah. and was on the Haunted Bay with me. Uh, and he called me about a year later and said, you know what, um, I'd like to write a script about it. I'd like your permission. I'd like to be able to, you know, we went forth. We went forth. Yeah. And I thought to myself, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, violence is something that it's a tough one, isn't it? Not to take it seriously. Do you believe that everyone has psychic abilities? And if you do, how do we learn to develop that, June? I do know that everyone has uh, intuition. Right. I absolutely know that. That's part of our ability to navigate through life. Yeah. When people say, I had a feeling, I had a gut reaction, oh, I feel it in my gut. You know, So I do know that that exists. The, si the next step up, if you will, it's like everybody can draw, but if you go to school you could and learn, you could art school, you can draw a little better. So the next step up, as you go more into the psychic mind. Again, you teach yourself, you devote yourself. Now, some people are born with a strong psychic mind, and I've read for some people who actually believe that they were insane. And when I told them, listen, this and this, in the reading, they went, oh, my God, do you believe me? I go, yeah, yeah. I can see it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the, and then the step mm. from, from the psychic is the mystic. And the mystic uh, just accepts and knows. It's, it, it contains so much wisdom within the mystic realm, and very few of us move into that space. But the psychic mind, you develop it through anything else that you develop. Uh, whatever you're doing, you are educating yourself. You're devoting time to it. That's important. I used to teach a lot of psychic classes, and it was it was great. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> what people could do. 
to open yeah, up. I love it. Yeah. I'm smiling. I'm just smiling yeah. thinking of them while I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like fun. A lot of fun to explore the unseen. The Actually, the unseen because we choose not to see, right? In, in a way. That's the fear. Yeah, we're too logical, too rational. We choose yes, to be yes. that way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right here. <laughs> I have had people say, oh, come on, you kind of people think of that. And then I say something to them. I don't have to, but I do sometimes. They're like, oh, you just gas. And I'm like, I just laugh at myself. <laughs> right, right. Um, because it's interesting how we limit ourselves. That we are just one thing, that solidity that I spoke earlier. And I think that we are in a way suppressing, right, Joan, those abilities, the intuition, aren't we? <laughs> And we think it's a one time. Oh, I did yeah. it one time. Oh, and then there's the people say, I have to hold it back because every time I do it, someone dies or something <laughs> happens. I'm like, Why did you choose that and not choose the beautiful messages that come through? Wow, there's something you, you said in your book that I wrote here. If your thoughts can indeed create your life's experiences, how can you better understand how to direct them clearly. How will you decipher what are truly your thoughts and those from sources outside yourself? So basically you're saying that we are absorbing and receiving information that's not really ours. It's out here, right? We just... Yeah. Hmm. And, and it's really wise to teach yourself that so you don't think what other people are projecting to you. And, you know, we live in a society where we are supposed to think and act a certain way. And, and a lot of that is I, I get it. You know, we can't run around doing certain things to hurt people. But advertising works on that because I took advertising in college. Um, I, I took radio production, but advertising works on people's psyche. That's how they sell you stuff. <laughs> and so you have to know what is your thoughts did you think it or did you receive it? So there's receivers and senders. Now it's a great time to talk about the ESP, Quiz Extrasensory Perception. And when I was going through the questions, I didn't do it the entire thing, but I did answer some of them. And automatically my intuition said that I was out of balance more as a receiver, not a sender. Yeah, that's, that is very common, especially for majority of females oh, right. and I am not excluding males and they and I've met enough females that are really strong senders it's good to have the balance because the law of attraction and creating and manifesting uh, creating is receiving often but manifestation is sending and it's not hard to understand. I know you have worked on your own life. And so in working it, you generated an energy and you had actions to uh, support that energy. And you attracted to you the right people. I mean, l looking at your sh who's on your show. Oh, my God. I was, I looked at it. And I was look at who she's attracting is what I said to myself. And so it's not hard to understand. It's very logical to understand how ESP works. Yeah. Talk to me for a moment about that, Joan. I know that there are categories, A, B, and C, receiver, sander, and then the C, you include many kinds of different sensory, yeah, different senses uh, or types of senses, clear audio, clear sentience, uh, clear audience. So lots of them, others that I'd never heard about too. So talk to me for a moment, how it works and how do we understand the results? Well, not everyone is the same. Uh, some people see, some people hear, some people smell or actually taste. You can have one or two uh, in the beginning and then the more you use it. Uh, when I began my psychic energy, I was seeing images. I was seeing, say, I used to call them like a little soap opera going on. Yeah. <laughs> I would see, and that, that's the, uh, you know, clair, yeah. clairvoyant. Yeah. And, and clairvoyant means clear, clear. It's a French okay. word. Clear, voyant, of course, means uh, visual. And then I began to open up more, and I began to hear messages. The messages are 
usually were never in my voice. There was someone else talking to me, and that's clear audio. Um, I stay away f- away from clear sensi, and I don't really have that as strong because it's very difficult to deal with clear sensi, and you know, empathetic people deal with it because it's in your body, and if you don't find a way to communicate it to bring it out it can stick in your body stay there um so yeah i tell uh, the test comes to where is well what are you and how do you heighten it and how do you balance it that's interesting because now you made me think about situations experiences i have currently around some people around me where every time i meet them i have a strong headache really strong uh- one Yeah, I'm like, why do I have this headache every time? That's, yeah, that's what you want to ask yourself. Why yeah. do I have this headache when I'm with this person? Right, right. It's something in their energy. So you are mm. you are receiving. Yeah. And it can be that the person either is whether if they're not physically ill, they could be mentally emotionally or they're, you know, they're complainers or they're out of balance or you know, you'd have to look at the person and say i would have people some people before in the very beginning I had people come for readings and they had a lot of problems or something they were happy when they left and I was really dismal and sometimes I got headaches <laughs> yeah the opposite I, I can't keep doing this so I had to <laughs> train train myself and go to some classes how do I protect myself yeah that's um, finally I, I made the decision I have there's a place close by my house and Reiki energy work uh, she's a medium psychic too and yeah. so I'm going I'll ask her to teach me <laughs> how to yes, love Reiki. Yeah. <laughs> because I keep doing that and I know because there is an imbalance yeah because every time I leave they are so happy and lighter and I'm heavy myself <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone pulling you the phone and going on and on and on and saying thank you for listening I feel better but yes. you're like oh god <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah it is it seems like it's a way to assist isn't it like to help but not a nice way yet yeah, to ourselves so I'll try to learn that June well to see it at a distance to 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 say I will know it but I will uh, move it out of my own physical atmosphere so I can look at it Wow is that possible to do in the moment oh, it is huh? yeah Yeah, wow. it is. It's, it's again, it's a training, yeah. you know, but it's well worth the training in everything in life. I don't care if you're going to use your, openly use your psychic mind or whatever. It's a good thing to learn how to move it out of your physical atmosphere. It's not really a protection thing. It's just dancing, moving energy, which is to me is almost a form of art. I love that because I don't like the idea of being paranoid <laughs> and thinking that, oh, now this person, I feel a headache. I don't want to be next to them again. I love people and I love connections and all that. So I don't want to kind of distance myself from them. But you could do it, you could do it by setting up that little parameter. Yeah. You know, and you can see it as a white light or however you want to see it. Mm. But it's a parameter. Like their energy cannot come into my energy unless I give permission. Oh, wow. So in a way... Their energy is kind of invading my space. Yeah. I'm too yeah. open then. Yes, you are. <laughs> Because you're an open person and you're curious. Yeah. And interested. Yeah. Oh, so I love be being there. like this too. Yeah. <laughs> that is an observer. A, a kind of a psychic observer. And that's Buddhism. And that's a psychic thing. I mean, it's not uh, unusual to watch yourself in a situation. The observer. Yeah. Yeah, be more the observer now. The, uh, what am I doing? Really, I'm just putting myself as... Heart a, and soul. Oh, everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're, you're interested in people. You love people and you're kind. You have kindness about you. And I don't want to lose that. So in a sense of becoming closed and like, you know, I want to protect myself and then become... You lose it if you don't practice having it outside. Stay in who you are. With that. You know how people become jaded? People say, oh, they're so jaded. They probably didn't start out that way. They probably yeah. started out as a very lovely, most likely lovely, open person. That's true. Like children, that's how they are. And then they become abused by others. And then yes. they become traumatized. And then they become abusers. And then it's a, a same, whole mess. Same as animals. Animals come out oh. and they're majority just full of I'm here to live. Mm. And then someone comes along and abuses them. And they become a whole different animal. 
such an important message, right? So we take responsibility for our own energies, our own body, yes. everything that's happening instead of just uh, giving, 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 and then receiving what we don't want because we are not really, we don't know what to do. I just scheduled my section with Beth, her name. If you're close to me, I'll definitely meet you. I'll talk to her in person. And then if she doesn't help for some reason that it's not working, then I'll definitely contact you <laughs> for some more tips, <laughs> a paid section because uh, no, uh, I need it. Take a step back, you know, yeah. if you can't do it in the moment, because sometimes we just can't, then we go away and say, oh, I should have done this. Yeah. Oh, I right, done right, that. Right. It's just whew, breathe, breathe, mm. take a step back. 30 seconds of just breathing. Take a step back. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I, I'm pretty fiery. I have to tell you, <laughs> I'm pretty fiery, so I have to remind myself all the time. Someone says something and I'm right back at them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's a reminder. Keep reminding ourselves. It's a practice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, June. So we are almost at the end and I do have a few more questions for you. But before I ask them, uh, would you like to add anything? I know there's so many other questions that I had here from your book because of the time. I don't have enough time to ask all of them. But if you feel like I missed anything, please let me know if you want to add anything at this time. Well, the, one of the important messages I have is that people really don't need to go to readers or mediums to get information. You don't need to. You can develop it yourself. But it's Good to have, a say, a teacher or a consultant. That's why I do metaphysical coaching now. Not to have somebody get this better job or this better car, uh, life. It's to teach them the skills of how to be consciously aware and how to attract and how to make sure you kind of protect yourself. So I believe it's important. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't go to a reader because it could be a wonderful experience or go to a medium, especially if you've lost such a loved one and you just have to. I'm not against that. But on the whole, you can develop this yourself. And I believe we should in this time of this world, if we develop a strong understanding of telepathy and how we are connected by telepathic thoughts throughout the world, <clears throat> like social media, right? What's that when now all the kids go on that Instagram, TikTok? Okay. <laughs> so if we connect telepathically, you and I and the rest can help to steer the world in a better place. We can actually literally do that through our thoughts. Not to buy into the fearful thoughts, not to buy into the hatred and the prejudice and things we're seeing now, but really, uh, I'm a Rosicrucian. I study Rosicrucian with the Rosicrucian for years, and it's a study group. It's not a religion. And at noon every day, wherever you are in the world, at noon, you stop and you send peace profound. You send this feeling of peace within, peace mm. without. Mm. Oh, so that's that. a I love your message because it kind of is teaching me to take responsibility for the energetic field of the body. The mind, I feel protected at the level of the mind, but not uh, in heart, but not at the physical energetic level sometimes, as I said earlier. So thank you, John. <laughs> I have a few more questions. Let me ask you two questions. What is another word for healing? I'll have to think. Another word for healing to yeah. me would be uh, awareness, awareness of what it is you need to do to feel that you are living in the right space and time, so to speak. Um, that's what I look at it. Uh, healing is the awareness of connecting to the body, connecting to your, you know, people say all the time, I don't know why I feel this way. Well, that's if you go to therapy after two years, you will find out, but you can do it faster. Why am I feeling this way? What am I feeling? And if you would see it perhaps in energy as an aura color, then you would be able to heal, to make right, to make whole what is out of broken, say, I, I don't know, broke is not a good word. Yeah, out of balance, out of balance. right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. True, so true. What are three things about life you know? Actually, what are three things about life and the afterlife you know for sure as of this moment? I know that they're connected, right. very connected. I know that life is truly what we have been saying forever. We are here to learn how to be a 
a whole person, a peaceful, and contribute to other people's lives in a healing, peaceful way. And until we get that, my belief is we will come back to do it again. And that's the, uh, I do believe in karma. And I do believe that we can change our karma. We can fulfill and end certain karma and we could start new karma. And we could choose, before we leave this planet, we can choose how we want to come back. So to me, that is so much of why am I in this physical body? And I failed plenty of times. I am not trying to sound like I got it down. I'm so already. Yeah, and, and I think that's the beauty of it. Are you open to learning every single day of your life? Are you open to it? And the answer for me is, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> yes, I'm open. I love that about you. Thank you so much, June, for your message, your work, your wisdom, and everything else in between that can be felt. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Well, you can always go, I think the best page to go to is juneahern.com, my website, because it gives any upcoming classes or it gives it gives everything. Where's my blog? Where's my social media? I think that's the most simplest way to say it. Wonderful. Now I have the link on your podcast profile. Thank you so much again, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye for now, June. Thank you for listening. To learn more about June Ahern and her work, please visit juneahern.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.